Ted, another couple guys with some incredible charisma are coming in here to uh, to Mid South. They were about to go on to be huge stars, but at this time they were brand new to the business. The Road Warriors are here on Mid South TV on September third, and they lose to Jim Duggan and Magnum TA by DQ. Uh, Ted, I'm guessing that this would have been your first time around them because, like I said, they were brand new. They had just debuted in Georgia here recently. Uh, what were your early impressions of them? Oh uh, gosh, I mean a couple of really nice guys, but when they first started, I didn't have a whole lot of hope for them. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, I mean, obviously two great, big, unbelievably built guys. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. It was kind of like, but you know what? They, they eventually got, they got it. They would establish a great legacy here yeah. in pro wrestling. Uh, yeah. And so, I mean, like the builds like the two of those had at this time were kind of a new thing in pro wrestling, like these super muscular, giant, jacked up guys. I mean, yeah. at the time, are you like, OK, I guess this could be the direction that pro wrestling is moving in where everybody's got to be this bodybuilder type? Or what did you think? Uh, I never I never thought that. I mean, I know that. uh but I know, well, Vince, Vince McMahon, but Vince personally, you know, you know, I mean, he, he had in the new office in Stanford on the first floor. I mean, he has a gym in the office that would be like, you could walk, you know, you could walk into a Gold's gym and everything that's in Gold's gym was in Vince's gym. Wow. I mean, that's how serious Vince was about training. And I remember one of the things he said to me, you know, when I first signed with him, you know, and I was going to be the million dollar man. He says, I, I want to see you. I want to, I, I said, I want to see you at the gym more. And I said, I got you. And I did it. You know, you know, I never got to be, uh, you know, and I never, it's kind of like, even if you watched, if you ever watched amateur wrestling, there's a lot of guys in amateur wrestling. They don't look like bodybuilders. No, and they're and they're really wrestling. You know, my dad had a pretty good build, but he wasn't. You know, you know, you know, he didn't look like Joe Atlas. Now, you know, obviously Vince liked that look. You know, but you know, it's kind of like, uh, and I did make myself more visible in the gym, and you know, I came along. But you know, it was kind of like. I was, you know, I was old school. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were technique oriented, you know, and, yeah. and fundamentals. Uh, yeah. And it worked, you know, yeah. uh, worked for many years. Uh, so uh, I, I think that a lot of our fans are probably wondering, OK, if, if Hawk and Animal just made it, their debut in Georgia, what are they doing over here in Mid-South? Well, according to my research, one of Watts' first acts as owner of Mid-South was to withdraw any affiliation from NWA, but they still managed a loose relationship, which allowed crossovers like this to happen. So yeah. I, I know wrestling was kind of cutthroat at times, especially in the territory era. Uh, do you have any idea how a relationship like this could have worked? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know I, ha I don't have a clue. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it seems very uncharacteristic for somebody to say, like, okay, well, we'll send our guys over there. It just must be an arrangement where they're like, yeah, we can kind of share guys and, you know, help each other out, even though we're not affiliated with one another. I don't know. It's uh, interesting. Well, I mean, uh, I guess business-wise, you know, even if you're not affiliated with an organization, uh, if you, I, I guess you could, you, know, you, you could have an understanding with, okay, if, if we want to make a little trade out here or there now and then, you know, we can't. 